Hello, this is Robert Glover, and this is my second YouTube video entitled Commentary on My Eclipse for Springs video tutorial entitled Creating a Spring JAX Web Service CRUD application in less than five minutes. So what we're going to do here is stand on the shoulders of the My Eclipse for Spring giants and begin where their video tutorial ends. Well, as you can see, My Eclipse for Spring is starting up slowly but inexorably. In the background you see my book Love Poems about Emma, but I digress. We'll be back as soon as My Eclipse for Spring is. Now, the actual video tutorial from My Eclipse for Spring uses My Eclipse for Spring 8.5. I, however, am using My Eclipse for Spring 8.6. That shouldn't really make any difference. If you're watching this video, you can uh, handle that sort of subtlety. Now, uh, the first thing that that tutorial does is create a uh, fully functional CRUD web MVC application, which, as you can see, I've uh, done as well. Uh, as you can see, I'm demonstrating that I have the ability to list and to edit and to delete. Uh, now I go back to the dashboard. Great, so now we have this fully functional Spring MVC CRUD application. All right, now you notice down here I have opened what's called the JAX WS tab. And there's nothing much going on here. It says no JAX WS capable resource selected. Now here in the left uh, window, I'm in what's called the Project Explorer, and I'm opening up uh, Generated, and I'm going into the Com Customers App Service package. And I click on the customer service impl Java file. I right click and I click open. And lo and behold, not only has the file opened, not only has the file opened, but in addition, we now see a button here called Enable JAX Web Service. And we're going to click it. All right, we're going to uh, choose the service package, COM Customers App Service. We're going to click OK. It's going to ask us uh, which uh, Spring Context file to modify. We're going to choose the Generated Service Context XML and hit OK. OK, now there are three things that I need to point out here. The first is that uh, it went into, I say it, I'm not sure who it is. Somebody, wasn't me, uh, must have been my Eclipse for Spring went into customer service impl.java. Now, to me, this is where it really gets interesting uh, and where I actually have something significant to contribute um, in my commentary. Uh, notice that in customer service impl, the uh, big change that, that uh, happened is that before it only implemented one interface, the customer service uh, imp interface, now it uh, implements two interfaces. The second interface that it implements is called Customer Service Impl Endpoint, which is, in fact, the interface uh, that it uh, just created. OK, now, uh, I have to be careful not to say something here that isn't true. I observe, and it's interesting, that these two interfaces have the same signature, which if I were taking a Java certification, I wouldn't have even thought possible. Well, apparently it is. Observe, I'm uh, here in the customer service interface, and the signature has three methods, delete, load, and save. Now here I flip to the customer service, the customer service impl endpoint interface, and it has the same signature, delete, load customers, and save customer. Finally, when I go back to the customer service impl implementation of the customer service interface and the customer service impl endpoint interface, there have been no new methods added. So apparently, even though it added another interface for it to implement, it satisfies that contract using the implementations that it already was using to implement the first interface. Let's just leave it at that. Um, all right, now we're nearing the end of this uh, commentary, and we'll kind of end with an interesting twist. But before we do that, 
let's uh, make sure that adding this web service didn't uh, break any of our existing MVC CRUD functionality. Well, we can see that uh, nothing seems to have changed from the point of view of the Spring MVC CRUD. We can click on View Customers and do the same things we began uh, this tutorial doing. Now at this point in the My Eclipse for Spring tutorial, and I'm referring to the text-based one, not the video-based one. The text-based one is based on 8.6, the video on 8.5. At this point you want to uh, rely on the textual uh, tutorial from My Eclipse for Spring, which is on their website. But I digress. At this point, what we need to do is to double-click as I have done, on the customer service impl java file it's, it's necessary to have focus so that when we now turn our attention to the java uh, web service tab it um, is uh, activated with that uh, frame of reference. Now what we're supposed to do is to click on the open web service explorer link but um, we don't uh, seem to see it, do we? Uh, there is a trick which I discovered if we double click here on the JAX uh, web space tab uh, and expand it, now it, now we can see the open web service explorer link which we must click at this point if we're going to be following the My Eclipse for Spring tutorial faithfully. So here I'm going to click it. Now I'm uh, jumping ahead a little bit. Uh, I'm in the web service ex ex explorer and uh, I already have it working and uh, the problem is I can't make it unwork, so I can't show you what I had to do to make it work. But it was pretty simple. Uh, when it first came up, there was a, a box where it said to paste in a URL, and using uh, the recommendation of the tutorial, I uh, plugged in this uh, address here that you can see, which is uh, you know my local server and the the context root. Uh, with after that, uh, Jax WS, and then customer service impl endpoint question mark Wistle. You can read that in the uh, t textual tutorial. And everything works fine. You can see here that I, I pressed uh, load customers and uh, go. And the customers loaded. But, you know, this is this is a waste of your time. I want to end with um, what I think is uh, the interesting part and the whole, the whole point of this, really, for me. Okay, to me, this is what ties it all together. Um, what I'm showing you here is the XML file called Customers App Generated Service Context.xml. And this is the location where we told it to place the modifications to the Spring Context. And what it has added here are three imports. And you see the imports refer to CXF. And you see that the JAXWS colon endpoint element has an attribute named implementer class that refers to the customer service impl endpoint. Now I have opened up the file known as web.xml, a file we are all familiar with. And notice, notice with great surprise, that there has been a servlet added to it whose name is CXF servlet and which intercepts um, all URL uh, patterns that begin with slash jacks ws slash asterisk. Alright, what you're looking at now is the home page of the Apache CXF project. It turns out that My Eclipse for Spring's support for web services is, as nearly as I can tell, entirely based upon the Apache CXF project, and that's a good thing. Now, on the user's guide page, I'm clicking on the entry entitled YCXF and I'm going to read to you what it says here about Spring integration. Spring is a first-class citizen with CXF. CXF supports the Spring 2.0 XML syntax, making it trivial to declare endpoints which are backed by Spring and inject clients into your application. Now in the Apache CXF section on resources and articles, you see there is a book entitled Apache CXF Web Services Development. Uh, here's the book, and it's in its third edition, and the first two chapters are free. And I read the first two chapters, and it's very good. I recommend it.